Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Gensler. I'm an admissions counselor here at Simpson. Before we get started, I will give it a couple more minutes here before we, um, before we get started. Go ahead and put your name, your year in school, and your hometown um, in the chat to introduce yourself. All right, well, we'll go ahead and we'll get started here. Um, again, my name is Mark Gensler, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Explore Simpson series. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about religious life. Um, on the call tonight, or myself, I'm representing the admissions department. Um, Reverend Mara Bailey, who is our Simpson chaplain, is on the call. Um, Eden, who is a current student at Simpson, and then Thomas, who's also a current student at Simpson, will be joining us. Um, so our Evening tonight is gonna to look like this. Um, I'm gonna go over some general admissions information, um, things you might need to know, uh, just depending on where you're at in the process. Then we'll dive into the religious life portion of the presentation. And then we'll have a question and answer session at the end. Um, monitoring our chat tonight is uh, Laura Mueller, who is our assistant director of admission as well. All right, so just a little information here about Simpson College. We are a small private, uh, private liberal arts college located about 25 minutes south of Des Moines, um, which is Iowa's largest city. It is also the state capital. 100% um, of our students do re receive some form of federal or some form of financial aid. Um, we have just about 1,200 or just over 1,200 full-time undergraduate students. Um, we do have a student to faculty ratio of 12 to one. So at Simpson, you're really getting that um, that. A uh, small class feel. You can't just sit in the back of the classroom and be, uh, be another number. Uh, this, the faculty are going to engage you in those classes and they're going to call on you. Um, so just, just know that. Uh, we also have 80 plus majors and minors on campus. And then um, last year, 99% of Simpson graduates were employed, were employed or in a graduate program six months after graduation. Um, and then also, uh, we do offer excellent internship opportunities. I had mentioned our proximity to Des Moines. We really utilize Des Moines as kind of an extended classroom for Simpson. So you're going to um, get well immersed in the, in the Des Moines community as well um, through those internship opportunities. So you're probably thinking, what should you do next? Um, what, uh, no matter where you're at, if you're just starting out, if you're a junior um, going to be a senior, uh, the first step would be to fill out your Simpson application. Um, we are a member of the Common App, so um, if you've already done that, go in and select Simpson as one of the schools that you'd like to have your application sent to. Um, if you are a senior, soon to be a high school graduate, you'll want to uh, make sure that your FAFSA has already been sent to us and you can log in. If you've already filed, you can log in with your PIN and select Simpson as a school to send that to. If you are a junior heading into your senior year, you will not file for FAFSA until the fall. So uh, just, just know that um, we won't be able to really talk those finite numbers until we get your FAFSA, um, but we can give you a pretty good um, representation of what financial aid looks like. Um, once we have your FAFSA and you uh, are given a financial aid um, award, your admissions counselor will sit down and go over that line by line with you. We really try to be transparent and upfront about the cost, of, the cost of attending college and really what everything on that award means. So what do grants mean? What are scholarships? Um, what are loans? How do you pay loans back? Um, how do you pay balances? Things like that. That's all stuff that your admissions counselor will go over um, with you once you receive your financial aid award. Once you have reached that point, what you'll do is you will pay your $200 enrollment deposit. That essentially, excuse me, <coughs> That will hold your place in the next class um, at Simpson. It's also your gateway to Simpson College. Um, with that $200 enrollment deposit, it unlocks your SC portal, which is um, where you will sign up for Simpson Orientation and Registration, also known as SOAR. 
You will also sign up for housing. And then um, you'll be able to select your uh, SC 101 course. And then also fill out any medical forms that are associated with that as well. That's all stuff that you uh, would get prior uh, or after you pay, do pay that enrollment deposit. Um, because of COVID-19, we have had to push a lot of our stuff to uh, virtual formats. So um, upcoming for the next uh, Explore Simpson series uh, will be Financial Aid Basics, and that will be the week of May 25th. And then um, in the fall of 2020, for those of you that are juniors, going into your senior year, you'll want to be on the lookout. We are doing um, Explore Simpson series for academics. So each, um, each academic uh, program that would like to have that will be featured um, will be have those out in the in the fall as well. So be on the lookout for that. If you have not already done so, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and use the hashtag one Simpson. Um, that is where you'll be able to get the most up to date information um, that we are communicating with our students. So um, I encourage you as we go along here, if you have any questions, type them in the chat box and we will circle back to them at the end. Um, I will now turn it over to the folks from Religious Life. Thank you, Mark. Um, it's so good to kind of meet everyone as best we can right now. Uh, my name is Mara Bailey and I'm the chaplain at Simpson College. I'm going to talk a little bit about our Religious Life Community Programming. We call the Religious Life Community RLC, so if you hear me say that acronym and you see it there on the screen, that's what that stands for. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our programs and our approach to Religious Life Programming on campus so that you know some of the things that you can expect as a student who's going to enjoy participating in these things. And then I want to give Thomas and Eden both a chance to talk a little bit about uh, their roles, why they chose to not just get involved with religious life, but also why they chose to be involved in leadership, because they each have experience in leadership in several areas within religious life and can give you some insight as a potential student uh, for what that can look like for you. Um, before I talk uh, about specific religious life programming, I just want to kind of give you an analogy um, about how we approach religious life, religious and spiritual life at a school like Simpson. Um, we are, as a college, affiliated with the United Methodist Church, but we welcome students from any background. And on campus, we have about 28 different religious and spiritual traditions that are represented amongst our student body. So what that means, you know, we, we use, I hear terminology a lot like a melting pot, but I'd rather use terminology like a potluck, right? So a melting pot gives you this image that you come into the pot and you become like everyone else and nothing is distinct about you anymore. Um, but at a potluck, right, we appreciate everything that people bring to the table. And so as a student, um, when we offer religious life programming, we're serving a variety of students. And so some of our programs are geared towards very specific populations or systems of belief. Um, and some of them are where people from all different backgrounds are coming and participating. And what I want you to know and what I hope that you hear through the midst of this presentation is that whatever your religious uh, background is, whatever type of church you might be involved with now or whatever you might be interested in exploring while you're a student at Simpson, um, is that we are here to help support you in that. We want you to continue to be formed and to be developed uh, in your own traditions, but we also want you to be able to connect and talk with students who might be different or believe differently than you do. So hopefully that this will give you a good sense um, of those things. But again, as Mark said, if you have particular questions about um, what we offer for certain um, religious communities or what it is like to be a student, um, certainly that's especially why Thomas and Eden are here today. So our mission in the religious life community uh, is to form, it's kind of based on these five things and that's what we're going to walk through. So talking about forming meaningful relationships, to grow in faith and knowledge of God, to encourage dialogue and learning, to build community through justice and service, and to invite others to join in the journey of faith. So we're going to start walking kind of through each of those, and I'll talk to you about programs that fall under each of those areas. <clears throat> Mark, I think you're in control, so I'll let you go ahead. Thank you. So we talk about forming meaningful relationships. Um, we talk about this in a couple different ways. We've got opportunities for groups to gather. Um, some of those are bigger groups, and some of them are smaller. And so a great example, we have a very active Fellowship of Christian Athletes group on campus, and Thomas is a student leader in that group. Uh, they meet once a week, and many of you may have FCA in your high schools, so you may be familiar with, with Fellowship of Christian Athletes, but they're a, a group of students that meet weekly um, for fun, for fellowship, and for devotion and worship. And so they'll work together and with some outside speakers um, to help students grow in their faith. We have a weekly dinner program called Food for the Soul, which is that bottom right picture that you see there, where uh, 
uh, area churches come provide a free home cooked meal for our students. And if you haven't been on our campus before, um, we, we cram into a coffee shop and we, we serve about 60 students dinner every week on Tuesday nights. And so if you have been to the campus, this is in the chapel um, in the coffee shop there. Um, so um, we love feeding students food and a lot of our programs include food, um, but this is also a great way to get to know some of the churches in the religious life community. Um, the next way we talk about um, connecting together is as we kind of grow in our faith and knowledge of God. And so we think about um, opportunities for worship. Um, and I'll give Mark a chance to catch up there. Um, if I'm remembering my slides correctly, I, I hope I am. Um, we've got a couple opportunities for worship uh, each week on campus, and uh, I'll walk you through kind of a typical week. Um, on a Sunday evening, we have Catholic Mass in our chapel, so we work with uh, the area parish, St. Thomas Aquinas, and Father Chris Fontanini, who's the priest there. So Father Chris will come and say Mass on Sundays at 5 p.m. in our chapel. Um, Thomas is also our Catholic student intern, and so he helps to coordinate the music um, and the lectors and uh, Eucharistic ministers for Mass and uh, invites members of our student body to participate in that. So we've got kind of a mix of students who come as well as community members who come to participate in that Mass, but it couldn't be more convenient 5 p.m. on a Sunday and then we'll feed you a free meal after that. So 5 p.m. on Sunday is Mass. On Tuesday evenings, we have a student-led dialogue-based worship that's held in our coffee shop, and this is an, this is a ecumenical worship. So we have students from a lot of different Christian denominations who attend that. I or some other campus leaders will preach at that, and uh, we've got some student musicians who lead us with praise band. Um, we also have some various uh, worship gatherings throughout the year. So you see pictures here from a fire. Um, a fireside worship that we do with s'mores around the campus fire ring and then our um, an outdoor worship we do right at the beginning of the year on the steps of the front chapel. Go to the next slide please. Um, we also uh, really care a lot about learning about the world around us. So as I talked about, you each come um, with your own uh, experience and your own hopes for what your faith is going to look like on, at college, um, but we want you to also think about um, that you're going to be in class with, maybe sharing a room with, um, in a fraternity or sorority with, people who believe things that are different than you. And so we think the best approach to that is to learn, um, to learn about other traditions. And so we host some things on campus to help our students learn about these things. We also will do site visits to areas, area religious communities. And so um, the first picture that you see on this slide is of our meditation room, which is another space in our chapel that's available for student use. This is a room that's available for any student, whether that's individually or in a, a larger group. Um, for prayer and meditation practices. And so sometimes we will have people who come and host events and otherwise students can reserve it for their own needs as well. Uh, we host an annual Seder meal. And so we have a Jewish faculty member who leads that for us every year as a way to help our campus community learn about the importance of the Jewish Seder during Passover. Um, and that's an open invitation to our campus community to come and experience that. And then you've got some pictures of other um, religious site visits and religious holidays that we offer on campus as a way to learn about other religious traditions. Our interfaith programming is connected to that. And so um, within our interfaith programming, we both support students of a variety of religious traditions uh, for their own personal practices and, and uh, worship and things like that. But we also, again, provide a lot of education and dialogue amongst religious traditions. Um, building community through justice and service. So I'm sure many of you have been involved in uh, service or mission through your churches or faith communities. Um, many of our students come from backgrounds where they had experience going on mission trips with their youth groups or serving in their communities with their high school groups. Um, we like to do that at Simpson too. And so we offer a variety of regular service opportunities. Um, and those look a little bit different every semester depending on student interest. But as Mark talked about, the access to Des Moines gives us a great opportunity to serve with a variety of communities. And so we've partnered with um, organizations, nonprofits, and faith-based groups who connect with the homeless population in Des Moines or with animal shelters. Um, there's a homeless shelter that we work with and serving meals and things like that. We also plan uh, alternative fall and spring break trips so that students have the chance to uh, spend those breaks from school in service. And so we make it really cost effective. And uh, the last few years we've gone to places like Texas, Chicago, uh, New York City, Washington, DC. Um, a few years ago, we went to Puerto Rico uh, to provide some hurricane relief after um, 
after the hurricanes that hit down there, Hurricane Maria and um, some other opportunities like that. So service is really important to the Simpson community and the religious life community also tries to uh, be a big part of that as well and offer opportunities there. And then uh, finally, we like to think about having fun, right? So invite others to join in the journey of faith. Um, and so um, this looks a little bit like everything, depending on uh, what the event is or, or what, our, what our hope is. And so um, one great example is our coffee shop. You see a picture of our coffee shop there. It's called Holy Grounds. And Holy Grounds is a great space on campus that's really well utilized. It is run by a team of student managers out of our chapel. And uh, Eden can talk a little bit about their experience uh, working in Holy Grounds as an assistant manager. Uh, so that's another great opportunity. You can volunteer in the coffee shop, especially if you're a coffee drinker. And if you're not yet, you will be soon. Um, we love Holy Grounds. We host a lot of events in there and our campus community uses that. It's also a 24 seven study space on campus. And so it's a really great space uh, to get to know because it's got some great resources for our students. Beyond that, we like to do things that just bring students together to create a safe and healthy community. And so uh, whether we're taking students rock climbing, ice skating uh, to Sky Zone, one of like the big jumpy places for college students, you know, lots of lots of fun stuff that you did when you were a kid, you get to still do in college. Um, and so anything we can do to kind of have fun and show a little bit of love to the campus community, um, we like to do those things too. And so um, a lot of students find that they find a group of friends within the religious life community that they might not have found other places. And um, it's, a, it's a group of people they like to hang out with. So we'll host game nights in the coffee shop or go see movies together, go support our fellow student athletes or theater students. Um, at the shows on campus and just find ways to really be community. And, and that's the way that we um, really take seriously the, the name community, that, that part of our name, because we want to be a place that's, that's creating uh, relationships among students. So Thomas, do you wanna talk a little bit about your involvement and um, you know, why you chose to get involved and stay involved with RLC? Yeah, thank you, Mara. <clears throat> My name is Thomas Musig. I'm a junior at Simpson College. Um, I'm currently studying uh, economics and finance. Um, I'm also minoring in computer science. I did see some of you guys are looking into, um, into those areas of study. Um, but I am involved in uh, not only Catholic student organization, but Fellowship of Christian Athletes as well. Um, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, like Mara mentioned, we meet up once a week. Um, it can be, some people might not all be involved in athletes and that's, or in athletics and that's totally fine. We bring in huge name speakers from uh, D1 prospects all the way to an ath um, Olympic athletes that will come in and tell us their journey uh, of, of faith and how they uh, about how they endure different different challenges and adversity um, and can ultimately connect us to their story uh, to kind of pursue ours and find our purpose. Furthermore, we'll do different activities once a week um, as well as play different games. Uh, and Fellowship of Christian Athletes is not only a great way to develop uh, your spiritual life and grow in your faith, but also establish that connection with maybe it's one of your teammates, or maybe it's with a different team, uh, whether that's softball, basketball, baseball, um, any of those kinds of sports. And you can kind of connect and intermingle and meet other people that way. Catholic Student Organization is what it sounds. Um, we have mass once a week. Um, and on top of that, we, we have um, an event right afterwards where we can speak with uh, the priest and eat a, eat a meal home cooked by uh, families that generously make it uh, throughout the community and so it's it's just an incredible experience as maybe some of you guys are christians or catholics um, going to mass and and worshiping um, is, is a great experience to follow in the faith and grow in your um in your journey but then furthermore to be able to establish those relationships um, that's what we really try to do here at simpson um, and on top of that, one thing that's really unique about what we've been doing and one thing that we're really hitting on for the next year is being able to collaborate with other schools as well, to be able to gain that background um, and push, um, push our spirituality even further. Um, one really unique thing about Catholic Student Organization here at Simpson is that we also do fund um, a once annual um, SLS or SEEK trip, if any of you guys um, are familiar with that. And when that, when that occurs, we, we uh, drive down to all different uh, states and last year it was in Arizona the year before it was in Indianapolis next year it's going to be in St. Louis so we've had great opportunity to go down there for a collegiate um, for a collegiate meeting to be able to meet up with thousands of different college uh, students from across the nation to grow in faith hear huge name speakers like Father Mike Schmitz um, and just learn in that aspect and be able to evangelize and learn how to grow in our faith personally 
I am also a student ambassador at Simpson. So if you guys ha have gotten a physical tour while we were back on campus, you might have actually seen me walking around or even giving you your tour perhaps. Um, and then when it comes to RLC, why did I choose it? Well, ultimately, I've been in the faith since I was a, a really, really small. And, and I've been, to, been at Mass um, just about every single time until since freshman year. So I've, seen the, so I've seen how things operate. I know how things work. And I figured that it was about time my junior year that it was time that I stepped up and I took over. And it's been the most rewarding opportunity of my life as I've been able to grow and develop and receive feedback from different parts of the community, whether that's good or bad, and I can work on that and then focus to grow our faith even further here at Simpson. Hey there. Uh, my name is Eden, and I am a double music education and theater major. Uh, and I, so I am very busy with my academics, but um, my areas of involvement in RLC uh, started with Holy Grounds, uh, went to RLC president, which I am currently, and kind of bled into uh, transferring into also being really active with the interfaith community and the other interns that work on interface specifically within RLC. And I got involved with uh, Holy Grounds on campus because I wanted to learn how to make drinks. Like I, I, I just wanted to, I thought that was a fun volunteer opportunity. So I started as a volunteer and then I started to volunteer more and I ended up applying to be an assistant manager, which I was for a semester before I applied to be the RLC president. And I applied to be RLC president because I had seen a faith community that I never expected to find anywhere uh, when I came to Simpson because I grew up Catholic and that was really all I ever knew about was being Catholic. And I had uh, friends who were non-denominational Christian or that were Lutheran or Baptist, but I, I had never really experienced another um, denomination of Christianity, even though like my boyfriend is not a denominational Christian. And so I, but when I got to Simpson, I was afraid that it was all just going to be like, if, if I was going to be involved in something that had to do with faith, then I was going to have to find more Catholic people. And not that that's a problem, but I wanted to learn more about other people's faiths and why they have the beliefs that they do. And that was given to me in the religious life community. And I got started volunteering at Holy Grounds and it just kind of took off from there. As we kind of uh, moved into the second semester and my first semester as RLC president, I got really involved with the interfaith community because I, I wanted to continue learning and I knew that I needed to know as much as I could about other people's faiths uh, to effectively lead a group of people. And I have learned a lot about leading a group of people in RLC as the RLC president. As other campus involvement, um, I'm very, I have three academic programs that I'm very active in. Um, I'm on theater scholarship and music scholarship, which means you'll probably see me on stage or coming out of backstage at shows. Um, I'm also a Wesley service scholar. Uh, so I volunteer actively throughout the year. I am also on the speech and debate team and I did debate for one year but I'm mostly a speech student and I am also actively in pride and I also play a lot of board games with the uh, board and card game club on campus so you'll see me running around because I often am running from place to place but I like to be busy and that's part of why I picked RLC because I knew that it would be something that would be worth doing and I wanted to do it and it has been completely worth doing every single bit of it every single shift i had at holy grounds whether it was dead or incredibly busy for the entire hour um every single morning that i opened the coffee shop every single uh morning shift i had in the office with thomas and our early morning crew all of it has been completely worth it to learn more about other people's faith to also help lead a community that welcomes everyone from every walk of faith life.
So I don't uh, know. Oh, go, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to say, um, if there was anything else that you guys all wanted to add to that before we go into questions. I, I think we're ready for questions. And especially, um, I know that Thomas, Eden, or myself would love to talk with students about um, you know, the specifics. Like, is there a specific program you wanna hear more about? Is there something you're like, you didn't talk about this, do you do that? Or something that you do already that you're hoping to continue in college? Um, we certainly didn't cover everything that we do, just kind of our, our main approach. Um, so would love to, love to hear from our prospective students. All right, and I think Laura is monitoring the chat to have um, to have those ready. So. Yep, so we don't have any questions yet. So if you guys don't know where to find the chat box, it should be at the bottom of your screen. So feel free to type anything there. Um, or if you would like, you can also just unmute yourself as well and ask a question. Well, while we wait, I'll um, spitball a little bit more. Um, so the Religious Life Community is definitely one of our more active organizations on campus. Um, we, there, there are great opportunities, as you heard, um, to get involved in so many different ways. Um, and I would say that RLC is, is definitely one of, one of the very active ones. Um, we offer probably five to six hours of programming a week um, and, and interact with about 120 unique students every week, but like across all of our programs. Um, so we are, we're pretty well connected amongst the campus community um, and we do partner with other student organizations for various events as well. Um, we really pride ourselves in being student led. Um, so you've heard a lot from me tonight, but honestly, that's not very common. Um, you, you will often see our students being the ones who are out front leading programs um, and really um, being, they, they are the face, they are the people that connect with our fellow students. And so um, one of the things I always, when I talk about uh, our program with prospective students is um, really letting letting you all know um, that we want to be the space that equips students to lead um, and, and to, to connect with their peers. And so if you have an idea for a program, um, we want to help equip you to do that. So if that looks like helping to promote it um, or giving you a little bit of money to help buy pizza or books or something like that, maybe you want to start a Bible study or um, offer an opportunity like a service trip um, to your peers. Um, we, we want to help equip students to do that as well. Um, so we want to be open and always responding to the interests and the needs of our student body. Um, and that all comes from you all. Maura, I just want to pick up on what you said really quick and say that being involved is one of the most rewarding things that I personally have ever done. And from other my other friends that have gotten involved, whether that's um, being in part of an organization, uh, being part of a team, being part of an extracurricular activity such as music, um, they can agree that that's one of the most important things that you can do on a college campus because not only does it make your experience better, but it also opens yourself up where you can learn those soft skills and learn about yourself, uh, learn what drives you and what's your passion. Um, and ultimately it can, it can lead you to living a happier and, and better life ultimately after college. Um, I was fortunate just to get a really good internship and I think it was a lot of it was because of the opportunities I've had in RLC, uh, showing those leadership qualities and being able to communicate with people and, and meet them that way. Um, so just kind of from a general perspective, um, being a leader is, is, is incredible opportunity and Simpson does a great job of putting that and opening that for students. So we still don't have any questions. So I would kind of like to throw a question out to all of you. Could you tell me your favorite experience that you've had with RLC? Eden, do you want to go? Sure. Um, my favorite experience with RLC um, might actually be um, kind of the, it, it's, it's two different events that accomplish kind of a similar goal. And uh, those are the Festival of Lessons and Carols and also the Baccalaureate Mass that, or the Baccalaureate Service that happens every, um, every year. And I say Mass because I grew up Catholic. Um, but the, and I, they're, they're different events. Uh, Lessons and Carols, if you don't know, is a, um, an English tradition that uh, happens during Christmas time. And there's a whole service set up with uh, music and there are readings and uh, you know the lessons and the carols part 
and I've been fortunate enough to be a part of every year's Lessons and Carols in some capacity, whether that's playing, singing, or speaking, all three of which I did this past year. And then I've also sung at the baccalaureate service both years that it happened um, with a small group of uh, student-led singers. And that's very important to me. Uh, and I think that they accomplished a similar goal of bringing together different people on campus through the speakers that uh, read the lessons or give speeches at baccalaureate from their favorite passages or favorite quotes that connect to their faith in some way. Um, and they bring them all into the chapel and they welcome multiple different points of view. And it's accomplished through not only speaking and preaching, but also through thought and music. And as a music person, I want to be a teacher. And um, it's, it's beautiful. And I, that's got to be my favorite experience I've had with RLC is getting to merge those kinds of things together. I don't know if it's fair for me to answer this because um, I, I forgot to mention this. I'm a Simpson alum, um, so I graduated in 2006 and I was uh, pretty active in RLC when I was a student. So I've got those memories, um, but it's a different day in RLC a few years later. So um, now I've got seven years of, of leadership as a chaplain um, and I'm just always impressed by uh, the the unique ideas that students bring our way. So the most recent example I can think of is we were really kind of struggling with um, how best to approach worship on campus and came to a place where um, we wanted to adjust the worship style, the feel um, and things like that. And so we had a small team of students who just were very passionate and excited about the potential to try something new um, and, and new things scare me. And so that was a good opportunity for me to step back and say like, I'm just gonna trust you guys, right? And so we worked together and put together um, what, how like the design we now use for worship, and um, it was just it was such a like a breath of new life, um, and and made new room for the spirit to work. I think amongst our community, um, and it opened up some great conversations, and really gave me a chance to hear more from students about what is really meaningful to them, um, and that was that was pretty cool. I'll let Thomas talk, and then I'll see if we've got a question that we we can respond to. Yeah, really quick. Uh, I think the most incredible experience I had with RLC was actually the first Bible study I went to. Um, I, I actually hadn't been to a Bible study like with, with peers before coming to college because that just typically wasn't something that my high school would do or something that uh, our church would do. Um, and so being surrounded by people that you not only that you're best friends with or that you met, you know, maybe, maybe even that day at Bible study, but being able to open up and share the gospel in the scripture and being able to build upon that and share your struggles and your hardships, kind of learn from each other that way. That was the most, that was easily the most incredible experience I've had. Um, so Nina asked, how or when do we sign up if we want to for RLC? So I'll tell you about a few different things. Um, and I also admit that like many things in life, um, we're not sure what this summer will look like. So normally we get the chance to meet you when you come to SOAR for your uh, registration, sign up and final visit to campus for orientation. Um, we have a table and that's when we kind of first start collecting and interest and talking with students. Um, because that's going to be virtual this year, we're still working out the logistics, um, but there will be some communication about um, from me or maybe from Eden um, with, with what the opportunities are to be involved with RLC, what you might be interested in specifically. So like Thomas talked about Bible studies, or you know that you're Catholic, so you want to be go to mass, or you're interested in Holy Ground. So whatever you're interested in, um, it's helpful for us to know that because we want to connect you with student leaders who are planning in those areas so that they can be in touch with you right away and help you get to get involved um, to begin to build this good foundation for your time at Simpson. Um, so there will be some communication this summer, um, but for sure when we're all back together on campus, there's a couple of opportunities right away at the beginning of the school year where we are really front and center with the student body. And um, we've got iPads, little surveys that you fill out and tell us what you're interested in. And that's our way to really get connected with you right away. Um, at any time, you can send an email to rlc at simpson.edu and we can kind of start Start that list now if you know that you're interested. Um, we would love to have that information from you. I'll also type my email address, I'll, I'll type both of those, that email address and mine in the chat so that you can send either one of those a message and say, yes, um, I know I want to be involved. Um, let me know how else I can stay connected. Beyond that, we also um, have social media handles. Um, so for um, 
Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can either find us Simpson College Religious Life Community. Otherwise, we also have um, one that's specific for Christian ministries at Simpson College and one that's specific for interfaith at Simpson College. So um, do you put in your searches in the various uh, social media places where you find yourself and you can find us there too. All right. Well, we are fast approaching. Um, actually, we've gone over our time. Um, so if you have any other questions, please reach out to us. If you have questions about the admissions process, please reach out to your counselor um, and they will go ahead and get you um, information. Uh, I, I see Mara has put contact information in the chat. So that's all right there too. So if you have any, if you need anything, please reach out. We are here to help you guys. Um, but thank you for joining us this evening and have a wonderful uh, rest of the school year. Thank you. Bye.